This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. This is a show where we talk with people in and around independent professional wrestling and sometimes world travelers like we uh, had today. Uh, or like we have today, actually. Um, you can, of course, check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can see all the wrestling podcasts, including this and so many more, including the flagship Wrestling Mayhem Show. That we do broadcast that 9 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday. And this, keep an eye out on uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page as well as the IndieWrestling.us Facebook page for the events to find out when these uh, these interviews do pop up here from time to time. Sometimes there's two or three in a night. Sometimes we won't have them for a few weeks. But either way, you guys can catch up and see who's coming up. And if you want to know, uh, if you want to hit us up, uh, you see somebody that's coming on and you want to ask some questions in advance, or if you know anybody that you want to be on the show, we definitely take recommendations uh, because, you know, we can't watch all the wrestling. Shit, we can't even watch all the WWE at this point, so where do I even start? Uh, so uh, if there's anybody you think should be on the show, please hit us up at goodtimesatwrestlingmamshow.com or 412-206-WMS0. So uh, back on the show, we had him last time. Uh, he had just spent about six months in India training at the Great Kali School, being a trainer at the Great Kali School. Uh, and he is back with us again. He is the Neon Ninja facade i think i accidentally busted out your old moniker back in the day when i brought up that this was happening uh so you know the bomber those days oh. when you had to explain to me what a bomber was the the bomber the suburban terrorist yeah. the aerosol assassin the aerial arsonist and the neon the neon ninja there you go Konnichiwa. <laughs> well of course we have you back on because you've been traveling a bit uh, as well, and because you were you you haven't really stopped. You you came back from India, and I think you were already lined up to go to Japan, and maybe even had like a Japan trip in the middle there somewhere, right? Um, so uh, I got back in February, and I had the it was England. I was debuting in England, so uh, it's it, this year alone has been really crazy because this is the first month that I have not actually wrestled in another country. <laughs> what a weird what a weird yeah. thing to like. Yeah. You can say that, yeah, you know, yeah. and I'm like super bummed that like, because like I'm like it, it was it was incidental that it kind of happened that way, uh, but I'm like bummed that like I'm breaking the cycle because I got mm -hmm. like you know nine ten months in without going because it was it was really weird the way it happened because uh, I wrestled in India in January, I wrestled in Engl uh, England in uh, uh, February, uh, I wrestled in the U.S. in March, I wrestled in Canada. In May, um, in April, I, <laughs> I went, then I went to Mexico, and then uh, June I was in uh, June was Singapore, July Japan, August Thailand, and uh, yeah. Jeez, that passport is getting uh, full at this point, isn't it? I lost the first one. So oh, no! Now, like, after, right before I wrestled in Canada, I had a match with Brian Cage. It was like an impact taping. Oh, jeez. And, like, I was looking all that week for my for my, uh, for my, my passport after the, the England trip. And I'm looking and looking and looking. I'm like, I can't find this passport anywhere. And... One, it has all my stamps from like all the other places that I've been to, like especially Russia, because God knows when I'm going to go back to Russia with the way the world is right now. Yeah. But I was like super bummed. I'm like, oh man, this is like a thing. But I actually had to drive, like I had to drop Danny off at work, like five in the morning, drive all the way up to Buffalo, get there as soon as they open, expedite a passport, and you can actually get it done the same day if this is done correctly. Mm -hmm. This was on a Thursday. That we had the, the event on Friday in Toronto, so it was uh, it was insane. 
Jeez. So, so the world traveled. You know, this, so this was interesting. Like, it seems like the floodgates have kind of opened for you because I know you've been to a few places before the the, the India trip, right? Um, I think what, what did you did you did Russia? I think at the time, right? Yeah, Russia, Malaysia, Mexico, and um, but they were kind of sporadic tours here, yeah. and there, right? Like it, it seems like the floodgates have kind of opened for this international travel thing. Yeah, like what what is it that kind of gets you over the hump to get there? Do you are is it just you've kind of hit a certain career point or I, I wish I could pinpoint it because I really I I don't have an exact I I think a lot of it is just happenstance because uh, a lot of these places are random places that a lot of Americans don't really get to because like uh like Malaysia and Singapore um, Thailand I've been one of the only Americans that have worked in these places in like forever so uh you know the fact that like I have these kind of uh, these these kind of runs is really I wouldn't say luck, but you know it just kind of kind of just happened. And you know the whole thing with Kali um, kind of opened the the doors to these lesser known uh, countries that are lesser known for wrestling rather. Um, but yeah, really, it just you know the the England thing is something that I had on on my list. Uh, Mexico, you know, I've been to Mexico. I have some connections there, but like, yeah, like like Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore. These are all things that are just like, kind of just pop up, and you know, thankfully they all worked out together. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Uh, so so from that, <laughs> sorry, I just had this question pop in my head. Yes, a fun one for you. What do they call Singapore Singapore canes in Singapore? Oh, they call them Singapore canes. Okay. Okay. Because they love they love the the thing. So the, the <laughs> little funny thing about Singapore too, and I pride myself on this because Singapore is pretty like one. Uh, I really love Singapore actually because it's like a melting pot of all like the, a lot of Asian places, and they speak mostly English. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you know, and it's really like a forward thinking, really green country, and they do have some rules and everything. And it's kind of weird, like like no spitting. Uh, you have to like lots of lots of. Uh, Lots of little rules and like no, you know, no pointing. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they actually play off of it. Like they'll have, they'll have, uh, magnets and, you know, touristy things, t-shirts that say, that, they, you know, say the, the place of no, like, and you know, they're just playing all these jokes, but I did something, uh, no chewing gum in, in public also. They don't really wow. sell, sell gum. Right. Cause they don't want people spitting gum. They don't want the, the gum, you know, everywhere. So, uh, I, I, I was making a joke. I'm like, well, I got to chew gum, spit, and spray paint all at the same time. And, you know, I wasn't looked down upon it. I was actually cheered for it because, you know, wrestling in, you know, it, it kind of supersedes any kind of law in any kind of universe, it seems Kind of like. like all the violence. Like when you watch like like Raw and you're just like, somebody should be arrested for this kind of attack, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's wrestling, so it's nope, fine. So, yay! <laughs> yeah, it's really crazy. And yeah, so uh, I a lot of times I kept making jokes. Um, I've actually seen some of the sickest graffiti in Singapore, and I got mm-hmm. some you know good videos of that. Just in because they have designated areas where it's like really really elaborate, and you know you'll see like like French style stuff along with um, you know a lot of uh, Southeast Asian type of stuff too so you say they're like kind of designated like like graffiti areas that they're allowed to yeah yeah that's cool so they kind of encourage that a bit more yeah because that way people aren't you know rebelling so much too Mm -hmm. and it's interesting too singapore because there's a lot of uh uh there's a lot of americans there too because there's a lot of uh tech areas Mm -hmm. over there like there's a particular area when i first had worked in the singapore um that was around chinese new year there was uh there's ibm and a couple of banks over there that um really like that not only just call centers but like that's like uh they have hubs there and even uh wwe has one of their uh southeast asian offices there um because the first time i was there they had uh you know there was a, a visit with like uh canyon seaman and a couple of other guys they were scouting for a southeast asia tournament and that was like that was last year and so this big grandiose uh world takeover or world sectional regional thing that mm-hmm. uh triple h announced like earlier this year 
I really see it as a reality because mm -hmm. he during that tour they they went they saw some guys in the Philippines, uh, Vietnam, and Malaysia just to like kind of feel out the area, and they do have like guys grounded in like like feelers and offices in these areas that, and, and even open performance centers like we, we talk about when they they announced what the um the saudi arabia show the first saudi arabia show too yeah so yeah um yeah they, we're really seeing that they, you know we're coming up on the third of these shows that's this like kind of international kind of flavor that's interesting and, and i know you also saw uh, their presence in India yeah. as well with, uh, you know, when they, they came came to town when you happened to be out there. Yeah, same thing. And, and you know, Canyon's, uh, Canyon and uh, uh, Mr. Norman Smiley came out um, and Canyon's like, oh, you're out here too. It's like, yeah. He's <laughs> like, uh, well, good luck. And I'm like, thank you. And, uh, you know, the WWE guys that come out to India, they, they have, you know, it seemingly much more culture shock whenever they come out because I got a chance to talk with some guys – uh, while I was out uh, India, like the the Delhi show, uh, the new Delhi show they had out there, um, I talked with Elias and a few of the other guys mm -hmm. um, after the fact, and they're like, "India is a crazy place, man." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." I lived in the country part of India. Yeah, yeah. For they're they're, six they're going to they're going to like the nice city yeah. part of it to do the show. Yeah. You're like out in the boonies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the whole thing with Billa, my cat that I brought back, which it, I think I'm going to film like I, I, I recorded a lot of stuff during that trip. I think I'm going to do a mini doc about bringing Billa back because I have so much footage oh, of that. Yeah. And I, that's a great story to tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. So you did Singapore. I know you, I saw a lot of stuff with Japan. I believe this was with the DDT promotion, right? Yeah. And it was, were you doing like some kind of faction out there with a lot of the guys that went over? Is yeah. that what's going on? Yeah. It, well, the whole Japan thing really came about. Uh, in a crazy way too, because I had an event in Singapore. Um, it was like a uh, SPW, which is a company that I work for there. Uh, they use a lot of um very um up and coming guys like uh, Pete Dunn and uh, British Strong Style was supposed to be on this event, um, but British Strong Style got kind of pulled from uh the event for NXT, uh, but Pete was still able to make it. So they did. Uh, they had me on the the event there in June. And then they had me booked in Thailand for uh, another show they were doing, um, a co-promotion with the company Gato Move Thailand. And so I had kind of like, you know, two bookends of of something. And I'm like, you know, I feel like I, I need, while I'm on the other side of the world here, I need to make something happen. And so uh, I decided to go to Japan while I was over there. And I had no actual... Uh, plans of anywhere to stay or anything but i did have uh through my connections i had three events scheduled so um with that i kind of organized a meeting with the president of ddt while i was over there um and i picked up some s smaller events uh there's match shows run by a company called gato move they're just like grappling, like grapple wrestling, but like it's a primarily a Joshi promotion. Um, so jo and Joshi is the female wrestling, yeah. Right? But they have like some uh, like intergender matches and like uh, men's matches, but it's in a room with uh, like a window that you can jump out of without a glass ceiling in it. So <laughs> it was interesting for me to work on you know character grappling and striking stuff and doing some of these before I actually secured my spot in uh, DDT. You're saying it's kind of a mat. Like, is it still in the ring or no? No, this is like Matt. it is mats, as in like amateur wrestling mats. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so wow. Yeah. So, like, the, yeah. It was. It's really like, like. I mean, like, it was like really like a storybook kind of thing because I'm like, uh, I was there for like two weeks because I was in Japan itself for about two months. I was there for a week and a half, and like, I was living in a hostel, and um, I, I, you know, I had. Uh, three events throughout the course of the time that I was going to be there scheduled. Uh, through the help of everyone, I, I picked up a couple of other events. Like I worked for Kai and Tai Dojo, uh, Taka, Taka Michinoku's promotion mm -hmm. over there. So I had that scheduled too. And all these other side events are something that wouldn't be possible for somebody that, you know, if I went over with DDT, I wouldn't be able to work all these other companies and do that. But since I went over like freelancing, basically, I could do whatever I wanted because I was on my own. So... I did. I was. Uh, I I booked up my schedule with some of these uh, sideshows with the Gatto Move, and um, then uh, I I got the meeting with uh, the president of DDT, 
and uh, he asked me to um, show show me uh, my favorite move. Um, and uh, Sammy Guevara, who was there at the time, um, I said, Sammy, I was you know dressed professionally, you know business cash, I guess you could say. Um, and uh, I'm like, Sammy, let me borrow your shorts. And uh, so he, I put on a pair of shorts and tennis shoes. And I got in the ring. He's like, do you need an opponent? And I said, no. And he's like, ugh. <laughs> so I got in the ring. And uh, I did like, you know, I come from like a parkour skateboard background. I did one of one, my warm-ups. It's basically like a, a line, like a skateboard line or parkour line. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, springboard in, roll, go into the headstand, roll, uh, run up the corner, land on the apron, tightrope across the ring, uh, get back in, roll run, do my step on the middle, step on the top, land on the apron, and then springboard, do my fancy springboard over the top, land on the second, and land like superhero pose. Yeah, I think I've seen you do this, like, this is your pre-match kind of, or pre-show ritual yeah. a lot of times, right? Yeah, and like, mind you, this is also the first time I've been in a Japanese ring since December, and mm-hmm. it was a different type, and it was insane that I was like, no warm, not warmed up, nothing, no pads, and mm-hmm. which I'm like, really like, weary about not doing anything with pads on. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, like as I'm doing each thing, I'm really feeling it. Cause they're like, Ooh. and they're like getting all into it. Like, and, you know, cause like they're very unique in the way they, they, they make their sounds and mm-hmm. whenever they're excited and, you know, they really show their emotion. So like whenever I finished they're like, yeah, they like, they were like, like kind of cheering. And Sammy's like, man, I wish I recorded that or put that on the vlog or something, because yeah. that was insane. And I'm like, I wish you did too. I feel like a million bucks. And they booked me to like till the end, like the, the rest of the time. They're like, okay, here's dates. And I'm like, awesome. And then so like, you know, uh, it was a little bit of a back and forth with them to like uh, kind of get me to stay in the dojo because they were really nervous because I wasn't there on a work visa through them. Mm-hmm. So like me uh, staying in their dojo, they're responsible for me. Yeah. You know, so if I did anything wrong or anything happened, they were kind of nervous. But it eventually all worked out. And uh Stayed in the dojo uh, through like two waves of uh, the guys because they bring people in for like a month at a time and they like uh, swap them out. So me and Sammy got to hang out and do some wild vloggy stuff and like go to Sea Paradise, which is like a, a Sea World, and then uh, climb Mount Fuji and uh, wow. got to see uh, Akihabara and like the giant Gundam statue and did all kinds of crazy stuff. And then it and then it changed uh, pretty much like three uh 180 degrees because then uh jason kincaid and mike bailey come in and it's a different it's a different vibe you know uh because me and uh me and sammy shout out segoy boy number one sammy uh we we formed a little tag team a little group within a group uh but um then when kincaid and uh mike bailey come in then we really we really got grinding into some more in-ring wrestling because we started training almost every day mm-hmm. uh, because we lived at the dojo and the ring was below us. So, you know, it was really, really crazy. But while I was there, yeah, the uh, the group, I kind of got thrown right into, like, the main group with their main champion who uh, you may remember, Irie. Um, he's a, he was a guy, he had come in. He would uh, stay with the guys at Rockstar Pro in Dayton. Okay. Um, he's a big guy, wears green, has a mohawk. He's a uh, really cool, really aggressive. He's been in with IWC before. Uh, I know AIW, but I'm okay. not sure IWC. Okay. But yeah, he um, he was the the KOD the the DDT champion at the time with uh, the guy Wataze and Sammy and Kincaid, who wasn't there at the time. Um, we're all within that stable. So I was pretty excited to be just kind of like interjected into this, this team, this stable that's like their top faction, like right from the gun. So it was like two match, uh, two events that I had come out and like Wataze, he kind of dresses really like, he's kind of, he kind of looks like a bodyguard or an assassin kind of thing. So like I was wearing my, uh, my dress clothes with him and I would come out, but like, you know, Watasi was like the all black guy, but I had like black and green dress clothes because I'm crazy. And uh, so there, there was two two events that I had come out, and then finally I made my DDT uh, debut in Currican Hall. So that was really like a crazy, crazy thing too, because like I'm like I wanted to 
go to wrestling Kurikan Hall like forever, mm-hmm. ever since I discovered Japanese wrestling, and that was my first DDT event. Uh, and um, it's also like a changing of the guard because we got to be in a, a we got to be together as a stable one whole time with Wataze, Kincaid, Sammy, and Irie, and before Sammy left. But uh, yeah, that was that was a and, real, really really cool and, thing. And Kurgan Hall, I believe, is, is that the one they did the Beast in the East special on the WWE? Um, or maybe I'm thinking of the Sumo Hall. Or yeah, that's Raigoku Sumo Hall. Okay, okay. Sumo Hall. So I actually while I was there too. Um, before, uh, I, I got hooked up with DDT, um, I got to go to a, uh, WWE live event, um, in, uh, Tokyo also at the mm-hmm. Ryogoku Hall. And, uh, that was the suit. I got to wrestle in the Ryogoku Hall, but there's a, the Ryogoku Hall and the Ryogoku Sumo Hall, which is a little bit bigger. And it's really crazy because they have seats where people are like, like they have like parts where there's no chairs where people are just sitting and, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're just flat seats. And it's like, you know, whenever you go into some, some, uh, Japanese restaurants to take your shoes off and you sit, you know, like kind of the cross legged thing uh, for you guys on audio there. Yeah. And, uh, it was really cool. Got to go to like a, a sponsor dinner and everything and, and see some of my friends. And, um, that was a tremendous experience too. So we keep running into WWE. This is, this is great. <laughs> All around the I world. mean, like <laughs> I, it is, it's, you know, and, but the uh, shows are everywhere. That that was that was a thing that I was really, I was really happy about too because I got to see a WWE live event in different countries mm-hmm. and see how they reacted, and that really was something that like I held on to because like I was really really like like taken aback because mm-hmm. seeing so many in the states here and you know obviously my goal is to be in WWE to see the different reactions and how easy you can get a reaction out of people both in these different countries. It's, it's really crazy. And especially the Indian or not the Indian, especially the Japanese crowd that were into the WWE style, if mm-hmm. you will, opposed to the Japanese style. And like, it wasn't so much that it was like, you know, comical or anything. It was still like WWE. Um, because you know, a lot of Japanese wrestling is taken very seriously, but, uh, it was super cool to see like just the contrast of everything. And like, it really opened my eyes. And I think, I think, you know, in the long run, that'll be something that sticks with me and it'll help me. You know what I mean? It's really, really crazy. I want to ask about Thailand because uh, when I was there with Chess Flex for a couple years ago, I was looking high and low for any semblance of professional wrestling. <laughs> we found Thai kickboxing, but I, I couldn't find anything. I didn't even fe- find like a WWE presence in like the, the the department stores or anything like that in the mall. Um, and there's a lot of American stuff there, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, how did you come across stuff in Thailand as, as part of this trip? And and what is there in Thailand? Because again, I, I was in uh, two probably the bigger metropolitan areas and didn't really see much of it yeah um so in thailand uh gato move is the the company Mm -hmm. uh now typically they have a lot of match shows they'll do match shows every week or every month yeah and they train um basically on on the map because there is only one ring in thailand and um wait yeah in the entire country there is one wrestling ring yeah yeah And they're very like particular about like overusing it because they don't want it to be damaged and everything. Is there a tariff on wrestling rings? No, it's just very expensive. They this was actually an old Michinoku Pro ring. Okay. So yeah, um, the uh, the events that they have, they use the ring like every other event, roughly depending on uh, the situation or if they have someone come in. But um, yeah, this was uh, the event that we had here was. Um, kind of like a part of the SPW versus the world thing mm. um, where uh, I was representing USA via Singapore wrestling or Singapore pro wrestling. And um, they had uh, other guys from Singapore, some guys from Russia, some guys from Japan. Um, so it was a, it was a pretty cool crossover event too. But um, you know, it was interesting like, because they like what, because they had the ring up, they took a, full advantage of that they had a a in-ring training session that day and everything but as far as seeing actual stuff regarding wrestling in thailand really only things i seen were like uh miscellaneous merch yeah like especially tiger mask stuff 
uh, which I thought was really interesting because Tiger Mask, you know, Tyler Tiger Mask is uh, you know popular everywhere, but like I I seen a lot of like figures and T-shirts with Tiger Mask, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, like I'm not sure if uh, you and Flexer you got to go to uh, Kyle San is like a like a bootleg market kind of mm -hmm. in Bangkok because that's only no, I don't think we made it, made it to that one. Okay, yeah, mostly just I was in Bangkok. We spent a lot of time in the red light district though. Yeah, well, yeah, like a, like a, like a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. So, well, that, that funny story with that. So, whenever I got to Thailand, it was really cool too because I had a late flight. I got to the uh, my hotel, which was a sweet hotel. It had like because it, 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 the weather's always nice there. Obviously, it had a pool that was open all night long. And then like, I'm wait, 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 wait. I got because this is my experience. Were there condoms in the uh, in in the uh, 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 bar no no it's no. probably because we were so close to the red light district oh man okay that yeah well yeah because it's just like here's some water here's some tylenol and here's some condoms so it's like okay i what is this what is this place it was a really nice place like super nice place yeah <laughs> right and then just like it they took care of every need apparently oh maybe they pre-cleaned mine or it was yeah. like yeah maybe. it was like it was like a hotel h or something or, I, I don't know what the heck it was or that my guest that was occupying my room before i got there kind of maybe oh, took care of them you should double check that bill because <laughs> what had happened whenever i got there uh i arrived at the hotel in thailand and uh they you know they're quick to grab your bags and everything and i had mad luggage because i had uh stayed in japan for two months so um I was in Singapore for about five days and Thailand for about five days, mm. uh, like the bookend of the tour. So I get there. there he's carrying my bags up the up the steps. And, um, you know, he takes the key. Um, he's getting ready to use it. He knocks on the door. I'm like, why is this dude knocking on the door? And then he knocks on the door again. And I'm like, hey, can I see this? Thank you. And then I unlock it here. And then, like, I open the door. And I'm like, is this someone's birthday? It's like green confetti and then balloons i'm like this is somebody's birthday and then danny ma'am pops right into this holding a gopro i'm like oh bleep and i'm like i start getting teary-eyed i'm like oh my god i was so surprised at this point you haven't seen her in how long about two months yeah wow and uh you know it's kind of weird because she had been like like gone radio silent on uh the phone for some reason and i'm like i'm like normally she doesn't do that kind of thing um you know and uh so it was it was like on and off sticky uh communications for a whole day but you know that's something that happens too i was traveling a lot mm -hmm. too and i was in the air a lot so i yeah. didn't really have like as much of the uh uh you know the stuff as i had uh, wanted to anyway, but I thought it was weird that she's not getting a hold of me because she's always like, "Oh, get a hold of me, get a hold of me." You know, girlfriends, wives, they they kind of tend to be needy sometimes. But yeah, uh, I was super surprised and super excited to see her there, and it was it was a great surprise. But it all made sense after brothers knocking on the door, and I'm like, "Why are you knocking? Oh, this is am I sharing a room with somebody?" <laughs> you know, the promoter. Uh, he, he, he would not have put me in there with someone random because everybody else, I mean, they speak English, but like it's a mm -hmm. bunch of Russian guys and, you know, uh, but and there was like the two separate uh, hotels actually. So it was just like, it was so weird. But yeah, it all, it all turned out great in the end. So we got to spend a little time in Bangkok uh, together, you know, with, um, we went to, uh, what is it? The Golden Mount. Yeah, we went up to the Golden Mount. Did you guys check that out? I'm not sure. Oh, so the Golden the, Mount. The names of some of these places escape me. Yeah, the Golden Mount's like a religious, uh, like a Buddhist monk. Yeah, it's a like a, uh, mm. it's a temple essentially, yeah. and uh, most of it is a, uh, if not all of it is uh, man-made. Um, so uh, yeah, it was a really cool thing to to see. Um, then um. You know, we had the event, uh, so it was great. We got to work together again um, in a far-off land. Before, one of the only other places we had worked together were, was in uh, Moscow. Um, but, um, 
then to bring this thing full circle, like you were saying about this red light district, (laughs) (laughs) um, some of my friends from Singapore who oftentimes are like tour guides, whenever we like went to, whenever I went to Malaysia with them and, you know, anytime I'm in Singapore, like they take me to the garden by the bay and, you know, the, uh, there's a giant like hotel, uh, it looks like a cruise ship with a, uh, uh, thing on top. It's really crazy. It's like a lot of people, uh, it's a big, uh, popular thing in Singapore, mm-hmm. but, um, in the red light district of sing of Thailand, um, there's a very popular thing known as, uh, ping pong shows. Oh no, you didn't. So, uh, oh, no. <laughs> under the influence of my loving girlfriend, she's like, we got to see one of these. Oh no, that was your idea. Very Didn't much. Didn't you hear the stories? Oh, that that's further further more the oh, further the enticing of these oh, stories. No. So uh yeah, um my friend he kind of downplayed it. Uh my my boys from Singapore, he kind of downplayed it a little bit. And uh he's like, Yeah, I've seen it before. It's uh you know, it's 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 a it's something to see if <laughs> if 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 anything. And I'm like, okay, let's uh, let's do it. And she's really pushing it. She's like, yeah, we gotta see this because this is like, you know, only in Thailand, once in a w- one and done, you know, once yeah, in a lifetime yeah. kind of thing, and uh, you know, very seedy place. Mm-hmm. You know, we were followed to this place. Was it Pat Pong? Mm, I don't know. I don't. There's several of them. I'm sure. Oh yeah, like, yeah. I think that I think that was the um the the red light district. The name of the red light district. Oh 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 yeah yeah. Well no the as we were going to the said bar or whatever establishment, um very very vulgar names of uh some of the places mm-hmm. you know um in English in English yeah and neon yeah. and then uh lots of uh, lady boys. No judgments, but you know there's a lot of <laughs> Uh, uh, gender bending, blurring the lines mm-hmm. that goes on in in Thailand, and it's you know it's something that is uh, very well accepted there because mm-hmm. you'll find waiters and you know just people just casually, uh, casually around on the um, on the streets or you know in regular jobs that are uh, the quote unquote lady boys I guess they w- they were calling them. But we went to the, the, the ping pong show. There was a uh, projectiles, um, ping pongs. Um, did blow, you re- did you return a serve? Blow blow blow. Uh, yeah, well, I, I returned. Okay, I returned. <laughs> My friend did not pick up his ping pong paddles in time, and he oh, did. Yeah. He's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It and was I, one of those. I saw that there was uh, two girls from the from the tour group with us, and I saw them pick up the paddles. I knew Flexer. I was like, don't pick. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, they were, it was, we, oh, it was the, to make things that much more awkward, we're basically the only people in there because it was early, like mm-hmm. earlier, like the just getting to be dusk. And, uh, you know, I was, I was, I was drinking a soda and, uh, I put my hand over my bottle like this. I'm like, no, I'm not like allowing anything to come, come, come near me. Or, you know, uh, I was just really like, and then he was just like, oh, I'm just messing on my phone. I'm like, how are you on your phone right now? This is the craziest things you're ever going to see happening. He's like, oh, yeah, whatever. I'm like, get off your phone. And then he got shot. And then he was totally done. <laughs> uh, his- With a ping pong ball. Yeah. I want to make the point. With a ping pong ball. Not, yeah. not a dart or anything else that way. Uh, Shout out to the statement, projectile. Andrew Tang. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, blowgun, blowgun darts. They sung happy birthday. Mm-hmm. We had to return some serves. I'm, I'm, oh, we're not saying that on air. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to do that to people. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you got to leave, leave, leave some for the imagination. For yeah, all there's those a couple that, of things that we don't talk about openly that they did. Yeah. That, uh, with 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 parts of their body. Yeah. That you know. <laughs> so leave some to the imagination. Very uncomfortable. Go go, go yes. check out the show for yourself. But you know. Uh, Thailand's a really cool place. The American dollar goes far. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a really like, and then there's, cause it's like, it's an, uh, it's got like it's upscale areas, mm-hmm. you know, where you can drop crazy, crazy amounts of money. And then it's got like, you know, um, places where you can spend money very freely and everything. But then there's also 
we went to the Platinum Fashion Mall, which was like super cool. Like, I got all kinds of weird clothes and uh, like by designers that are just like trying to get their name out there. And uh, like, I got like these suits, but like, I can't even describe what the suits are. Like, they're short suits with like long sleeve shirts that roll up, but they're like shorts. One's got like sharks on it and like all kinds of weird mm. patterns and like i got all kinds of cool bootleg stuff but uh yeah uh thailand was fun but japan definitely had my heart because all of the stuff going on in japan was stuff that you know i've always been in love with like i got to like pokemon the movie came out while i was over there <laughs> i got to play pokemon go like so much every day I could just walk to anywhere and there was raids going on and people were just like playing and you don't even know they're playing. And it's like, Oh, what? I don't have to like go on discord and organize a, a crazy like raid party. And you know, and then I got all kinds of wild, uh, shout out to my man tap out out there. Uh, <laughs> Oh, walking by there. Yeah. He's like, Oh, what are you guys doing? I want to come. But, uh, yeah, there was so much like uh, Pokemon stuff. Started trading Pokemon. What, like the day that I got there, started trading Pokemon. S Singapore is also like the number one place for Pokemon raids because uh, that is uh, they got the number one player in the in the world in Singapore and uh, not Andrew Tang, uh, Andrew Tan. But the funny thing is, Singapore you can get from one side to the other in an hour. So you see that egg cracking, you can get over there and. They have like mapped out areas where they'll just they'll go they'll go like in a, in a, a perfect route where they're just hitting stuff boom 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 wow but yeah like Japan culture something that I've always been in love with uh, I got to see the Godzilla statue and um, uh, got to play all the Pokemon I wanted to got to go to like a couple of uh, different um, anime places. Like the Akihabara, which is like the the game district, and they had uh, all the sweet stuff there. I got to go to Ribera, and uh, instead, like uh, instead of getting a Ribera jacket, I got I got them on actually. Oh no! These He's showing us his pants. Ribera. So those aren't Zubas. Those are those are. These are actually Zubas. Yes. All right. But they are. It's a Ribera Steakhouse on them. Yep. Steakhouse Tokyo. They are so, and also Chicago Bulls. So yeah, because they've red and black ones that are Chicago Bulls. They're so vintage. They're like, I, I couldn't even take these off. These are oh, actually, wow. Yeah, I couldn't even take these off. Because they have the tags on there and everything. Yeah. So if you're if you're not on video, we just have a picture of his crotch right now. Uh, but it was sweet Zubas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. Show it off. There you go. There you go. You, there you go. <laughs> Package placement. Uh huh. But yeah, I was like, you know, everybody, you always hear the story of everybody going and getting their uh, Ribera jacket and everything. Mm -hmm. Everybody always going to Japan and going to Ribera and getting their Ribera jacket. And I was cool with that. And, but I am all about the Zubaz. Me and Danny Mam were sponsored by Zubaz. And so we have like all the neon Zubaz we could ever want. And, they're like, well, we only have three X jackets. I'm like, oh, it's cool. I don't need a jacket. And he comes out with Zubas, and I'm like, what? Segoy. Segoy is uh, awesome in Japanese. I got to pick up some. Like, nice. So many times I've heard the word Segoy, but I'll go into that. But I was really, really like super excited. I'm still super excited. I don't even want to wash these ever. But I got some uh, questions from the chat room. Yes. I want to get to here. Uh, everybody out there waiting patiently. Um, there's a few of them. First of all, uh, do do do. Who did you enjoy perming, uh, performing with most internationally? Oh, so that's from Tom out there. So during this tour, I got to work with a kid, um, in Singapore. No, uh, eleven year olds this time, or uh, no, no, <laughs> like in India. Little little Drew. Uh, yeah, that's apparently like you know that became a big thing with. Mm -hmm. uh, Got what? Did that start with the the little girl, um, the Bailey girl? Yeah, the Bailey girl and, and uh, Effie that we've had on the show yeah. had a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to meet him down in New Orleans after you know the he was on the show. But um, 
there was a couple people. One of the guys I got to work with was uh, this kid, um, Black Arrow, in Singapore. The kid had not had ever had a singles match. He had left uh, wrestling for over a year and a half to uh, – he's in the military. It's kind of mandatory to do a term in, of, of military service in Singapore. Mm-hmm. But he had uh, really excelled to the point where like, he's like a commando, basically. Um, and he's going to actually make, it, um, uh, make a life career of it. And, uh, but this kid, um, he, we had such a good match. I was really, really happy with, uh, the way that, you know, he carried himself. We had a, a, a good match, good long match, like 15, 20 minutes and everything. And, uh, it's nice for me to get like a different side of me out too, because like, you know, the fans are really into me there, but this was a special moment for him because he had not been not only in his like city wrestling but he had been gone from his family for a long period of time too so he was only here on leave so there was a lot of his family there to see him wrestle and uh you know um we had one one heck of a match because i i was you know not the you know good guy bad guy but i had to turn up my aggression like oh guys you want to cheer him okay let's cheer him and, you know, pour it on. And then, like, you know, he held his own. You know, I give him all the credit. But, um, yeah, outside of that, uh, had a great match with uh, Andrew Tang in Thailand. And um, in Japan, it seemed like, it seemed like, I can't, I can't even point out one actual, uh, you know, favorite match from there. Because uh, it seems like there's no weekend in, in Japan, I lost track of what day of the week it was. And I didn't even care because, uh, you know, here in the States, most of the time, you know, Oh, the weekend's coming now. I wrestle. No, I'm wrestling like every other day. And, you know, it was really cool for that aspect. But yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> there's some other questions as well. Uh, what was it like, uh, tagging with Matt Hardy? I believe that was with remix, right? Yeah. Uh, remix pro tag champions, um, team neon extreme. Uh, that was amazing, really. Um, you know, I, I had got to uh, meet Matt Hardy years ago whenever he come in for IWC. We had that dream match, AJ versus Matt Hardy. I think you remember that? You, uh, yeah. That was the, I, I came in after that, but okay. uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, there was that. And then, like, uh, we had done the Pro Wrestlers versus Zombies movie together. Mm-hmm. And then almost immediately after that is when we had our first match. So we had a couple of matches as uh, Remix Pro Tag Team Champions. And, uh, you know, working with Matt, um, him and Jeff both have always been guys that I had looked up to, uh, both in style and character. And it's just, you know, uh, literal dream dream match, dream come true to be able to work and learn from him. And, you know, even ever since then, uh, seeing him after the fact, you know, he, he tries to stay in touch and, uh, he, um, he looks out for me whenever, um, uh, you know, whenever I'm around any kind of WWE guys. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Also from which I have a few questions came in here. Um, Wesley is asking, uh, and I don't know the context for this one. Wesley's asking if, uh, what is your relationship with Ricky Shane page? Shane Page, uh, friend, acquaintance. Uh, <laughs> we've never, we've only had. Uh, I feel like I feel like I'm getting shooter interview. I, I was diving in the shooter interviews last night. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, me Ricky Rick- Shane Page is he a dick? No, oh. that's somebody else's game. Oh, <laughs> no, Ricky's always been super cool to me. Yeah, uh, we had worked together a, a lot, um, shared a locker room a lot more than worked. Uh, had matches together in uh, hybrid, uh, and back in the early days of AIW. Um, uh, had a couple matches with Ricky, even uh, a one-off. Whenever uh, Firestorm was still around, mm. um, I Fle- was a Cleveland member- promotion. Yeah, yeah. I was a me- I was a member of Faith and Nothing. Uh, it's like a, a third. Um, I was wearing a Hayabusa mask, and instead of them doing all their black and white like how they would have their gear, they were like black and red and gold. And like I had a like uh, uh, red and gold uh, Hayabusa mask that I was wearing for a minute. Used to be Sean Phoenix's. Shout out Sean Phoenix. Mm-hmm. 
RIP, get well soon. That's right. Uh, we also asked about uh, if you if you still speak with Johnny Gargano. You guys, of course, teamed a while, and he's on fire lately in uh, NXT. Um, not so much. Uh, you know, uh, Johnny is always a guy that he really kept to himself a lot, unless uh, you know, unless there was like something going on, and we weren't really so so close. Um, like uh, I would come and you know, I'd I'd stay with him and hang out with him when I was in the Cleveland area. We travel a lot, but it wasn't something where. You know, uh, you know, we would always, you know, stay in touch so much. But uh, yeah, Johnny, Johnny, you know, he deserves everything he has. He has always been, you know, what he is now, mm-hmm. and it's just good to see that, like, finally just chiseled away, literally and figuratively, uh, to see what he always has been, and he can showcase that on such a stage where he can really shine and you know make money i guess absolutely uh alex is asking if you say we mentioned you went through the russia uh area as well he asked if you wrestled in belarus U- ukraine area i no. think you, you're mostly russia pop, pro- proper when you were over there yeah yeah the first time was in saint pete uh for northern storm and the second time was iwf uh in moscow um i'd love to go over to to ukraine um also uh, another area that uh i've been looking into is a uh, hungary um mm-hmm. there's a, a friend of mine who wrestles who uh, laszlo arpad he's from hungary and uh so um there's a there's a good little wrestling scene over there um some guys have come over from hungary recently um laszlo's boys but um yeah never never uh i didn't know there was wrestling so much in ukraine either poland's uh, poland's another one that i'd like to to check out too um i've got a little bit of uh I'm very much a mutt, so French, Irish, German, Hungarian, uh, Polish. I like to try to hit all those spots. They're a little bit out there. See the see the, the homelands. Yeah. Uh, also, somebody wants to know your uh, Pokemon Go code. Oh, <laughs> yes. No, that we can, I, we'll, we'll get we, that. We can drop in the chat room afterwards. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, so we'll travel to Facade. Uh, what... Uh, what is the mean? What well, first of all, I'm going to alter one of these uh, closer questions. What was the most uh, interesting promotion you saw in your travels this time around? Most interesting promotion in my travels, I think it was the, I think it was the Gato Move promotion because like, oh, and that was the, the Thailand. Uh, that was in Japan. That was oh, the map. Okay, so Gato Move Thailand is uh like a. Is a like, uh, spin off of the Yato move, like, um, and this is the one that had like the mat wrestling, yeah, and the, the ring Joshi and everything like that, yeah, and a lot of Joshi because, like, the, the, the Joshi wrestling, like, so they would open the show with a song and they would sing and, like, blah blah blah. Everyone would come out, introduce themselves, not really necessarily introduce themselves, they'd get introduced, mm-hmm. and then, uh, just like the May Young classic, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, so they would get introduced. And then they would, um, uh, they, they would have the matches, and then they would sing a song at the end, mm-hmm. and then uh, everyone would come out and give tea to the audience, and then we would sit and we would talk about the match, uh, and talk about any random things. And most of the time, I had no clue what they were talking about until they come to me, and they're all like, they're, we're all talking, 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 and then they're talking, they're looking at me, they stop talking, and I'm like, okay, I say something now. Uh, because my my Japanese is very broken, I can read like hiragana, um, some some katakana, but my conversational Japanese is very limited. Like konnichiwa, uh, arigato zaimas, thank you, Sugoi, I heard a lot because Sugoi is awesome. People would come up to me or Sammy or Kincaid, and they'd be like, "Oh, Sugoi, oh your match, Sugoi means means awesome." So like Sugoi is something that like I've adopted, but. Yeah, there's, you know, just conversational stuff is not really there. But Gato Move was really the company that I, I had I had not even known that this, this type of thing was even a thing because mm-hmm. of it just being, you know, just so far off the, the beaten path. And, you know, with uh, what quote unquote kayfabe is in Japan, you know, it doesn't really necessarily – it transcends because uh, – you know, it's a lot of a show. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And the same thing goes with DDT, too. The nice thing, uh, the thing about the Renegades in DDT, because DDT, uh, 
you know, had been known for such a comedy uh, promotion. But Irie come to USA on excursion, and then he come. And while he was here, everyone's like, "Oh, he worked for comedy promotion DDT." And it kind of like he's like more of a serious wrestler, like a really good, like serious wrestler. And then he come back and he formed the Renegades by, you know, defying and going against the grain with all this comedy stuff. Mm -hmm. So like the idea of the Renegades and you know it was expanded upon me and Sammy and Kincaid and Watazi that is that we're so good wrestlers and we can we can make fun of it and be weird and funny and everything without having to do comedy but we're still winning matches you know we're 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 being awesome wrestlers but you know you guys are too busy messing around we're beating you you know what i mean so but then at the same time we're kind of being jerks about it cuz especially if you've ever watched a, a Sammy Guevara match he's kind of like in your face about being the best ever and you know, uh, we weren't necessarily good guys, the mm -hmm. the Renegades, but we're we're on the fence. We're, I guess you could say, cool cool bad guys. Awesome. What's the best and worst thing about international travel? Ooh, best and worst thing about customs. Mm -hmm. Man, customs mm -hmm. are the worst. Oh, because I don't care about flying. Like I'll keep myself occupied. I'll find something to do. I typically I watch all my I rewatch like my favorite movies. Like I either watch The Matrix. Or superhero movies, or if like I'm on some like crazy thing that has like some up and coming movie that is like pre pre coming out, mm -hmm. like it's about to come out on DVD, but it's not, or it's in the theaters, you can catch a movie on, on there. Or, uh, you know, I try to read, but reading uh, makes me sleepy sometimes. I'll play my 3DS, but uh, going through customs is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. You got to wait and you got to empty out all your stuff, and there's a lot, a lot of people. Because it's these giant planes that just hold so many people, and uh, yeah, like um, that. That's probably the worst thing. Even I've got TSA pre-check coming back into the states, so that's not so bad. But like just waiting and going through all the all the all the trouble of uh, customs in another country is is the rough part. Sleeping is even. I've gotten used to that because like I've come up with like a complete method where I got a neck pillow, I got headphones in. I got my eyes, so I'm like com completely sensory deprived, and I'm just like, just like, 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 <laughs> on a cloud. I'll get like an extra pillow, so my my elbows aren't grinding into the seat. You know what I mean? Because that becomes a thing too. Mm -hmm. And then I'll wrap my arms in a cover, and I'm just like, all right, this is my life. I'm gonna live here for the next twelve hours. <laughs> That's the thing to 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 go to India or Southeast Asia. Some of those flights are uh, you know twelve hours. To Singapore, mm -hmm. particularly, I heard it's like the longest flight. You can get the one, the one from California to Singapore is the longest flight in the world. I think is eighteen hours. Jeez. I've done that only once, but like the twelve-hour flights, uh, you know, you get pretty bored. Yeah. Uh, I sometimes take like a exercise band and uh, just get a little pump, get a little stretch. People look at you weird, but it's like, what am I going to do for twelve hours? What yeah. are you guys doing? Yeah, yeah, I did thirteen and a half there and back uh, to China for the yeah. connector. And yeah. It just, you get up and walk around. It's it, it's crazy. Yeah, you know. But a lot of my awesome. layovers were in Shanghai. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I know exactly what you mean. But like, it's like okay, I'm gonna gonna eat this weird food, <laughs> and or like you can like or people were drinking, and drinking, and drinking, and so like go to sleep. Oh, did you have the when you're in Thailand? Did you have the beer with the uh, the elephant on it? No. Oh, that was good stuff. Beer with the elephant on it. No. <laughs> Probably not like one of those 120 minutes that you get at Christmas uh, time, Something right? like that. Something, oh. uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I accidentally uh, ordered a bucket on it uh, of it before we left because uh, <laughs> uh, it's lost in translation a little bit. Uh, but anyways, uh, awesome. Thank you so much for coming back, sharing your travel stories Thank with you. us. What's coming up for you uh, generally? Where, where, where are you heading next? Oh, well, uh, some stuff this weekend. Next weekend um, – and yeah. timeliness, I, I don't know when this is going to come out, yeah. but uh. Uh, end of October, we, I got PPW and uh, some things. Uh, really, my schedule. Um, there's a there's some things that I can't really announce yet that are in the works, uh, but um, yeah, uh, that's a very vague statement. You're gonna be around. I'll that's be a... around. You'll know. <laughs> you'll know me when you see me. You know what I mean. That's great. But uh, 
you know, some good things are on the horizon. Oh, for your geez, boy. we even talk. We didn't even talk much about Impact Wrestling. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You've too. been on TV. I, 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 I did uh, Ring of Honor and Impact. Ring of Honor and Impact. Like I, the same week, I think. The same week it debuted. Yeah, and then since then, I've, I've, I've been doing uh, Ring of Honor pretty consistently. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not under any contract, and so I've, I've actually, I come back from Japan. Uh, me and Kincaid are teaming as the Renegades in Evolve. Mm-hmm. So, and we it, saw you across the street at the uh, Lucha Fiesta. Yeah, Lucha Fiesta, <laughs> eating uh, tacos and you know hanging out. I've been on three different shows, or I've been on like five different shows with Ultimo Dragon mm-hmm. on three different in three different countries. Wow! So that's crazy. I got to wrestle Ultimo Dragon too. So I'm like, yo, what what are we doing here? At least you don't like take his mask every time you meet, just like uh, Sam Adonis. Yeah, that's a funny thing. You know what? That, that was so crazy too. That was in the beginning of the match. He just takes his mask. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, both him and Mystico. Yeah. That's of course over at Lucia Fiesta Pittsburgh. It's over on Fight TV right now. If you yeah. want to check that out, check it out. That's it's a good. Check out Facade over there. It was a good time. Banger of a show. Yeah. Yes. Such a cool atmosphere too. You know, outside shows are always uh, hit or miss, and thankfully, thankfully, we were blessed with the good weather that day. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Uh, where are you at online? Uh, check me out at the number one facade, F A C A D E one facade. Sometimes people say facade, sometimes people say facade, sometimes people say, fa- man, it's depends every- on what country you're in. Yeah, depending <laughs> what country, people do not know how to say it. Uh, check me out, pro wrestling tees. I think it's French. Um, uh, on français, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, uh, pro wrestling tees. I've been doing some more stuff on my uh YouTube, trying to expand that, trying to make some vlogs been doing like random things on there like unboxing i got some new funko pops i got a super rare funko pop the uh power rangers ultra dinosaurd oh i saw that yeah. one yeah oh my god i was so excited about that it's giant it's big <laughs> oh but yeah i'm gonna start doing like just random youtuber stuff because you know i've just I, I i record all this stuff and i don't really use it like i recorded so much stuff when i was playing pokemon go because i watched so much pokemon go youtubers mm-hmm. so you know, if I just, I just got to edit stuff. You know what I mean? That's but the big thing, right? It's hard for me to, uh, yeah, I can only imagine. Mm-hmm. Then the more you record, the more you have to edit. You're like, yeah. Uh, we're talking to the guy that's sitting on three wrestling shows right now. He has to edit. So. Right. I just want to <laughs> sit at home, pet There's my a bunch cat, of other stuff. watch Netflix and wrestling. I don't know what that is. What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Always great to have you here on the show and uh, catch up with you. Yeah. Thank you for having me and uh, see you guys later. You can check it out. We, uh, we again, we we have a lot of stuff with Facade over on IndieWrestling.us. A lot throughout your career, actually, uh, here in the Pittsburgh and the Cleveland area. So go check that out. IndieWrestling.us. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com.